worker myself. Uh, I'm doing lots of international youth work, but also local here in Armenia. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I have to say that uh, actually uh, youth work sector, <laughs> as many other sectors as well, suffered a lot uh, from this pandemic and COVID-19 uh, situation. Uh, so of course, uh, I won't be so original <laughs> not mentioning this uh, uh, fact in my, uh, uh, in my words. So, uh, but basically I see that youth work sector and many youth organizations reacted really promptly to the changing situation brought by uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And um, from my perspective, uh, youth clubs and organizations showed that they are much more resilient and creative than it was thought before even. Um, but on the other hand, I see as a challenge and as the issue for, for all uh, youth organizations organizations and youth clubs uh, specifically, uh, that uh, this situation doesn't always bring uh, that visibility to youth clubs and organizations uh, that we wanted, uh, uh, more preciously, uh, to be more visible and more recognized uh, of being innovative and flexible in our uh, work that we are doing. So this also doesn't translate you know, into getting better recognition and funding. Uh, this is the first challenge. Uh, then I see that there were uh, expectations from youth work sector to come up with innovative solutions for the situation that nobody was expecting actually and were uh, ready for and which to me um, did, they did uh, br brilliantly actually. However, people are not also ready to give proper reward and recognition for this. Uh, sometimes we had these challenges uh, uh, also coming from the uh, side of our donors and funders uh, who almost uh, stayed not flexible in supporting these creative approaches and solutions of youth organizations on the European level. So, uh, the needs of young people uh, in Europe uh, and specifically in Armenia uh, actually are very much related with the situation that we are all uh, faced now. Uh, it's the, the pandemic and the lack of mobility, of course, these days, because uh, on the European level and on the Euro international youth work area, uh, this uh, brought many many uh, needs uh, to, for young people and um, uh, I, I, I really want to a bit uh, focus on the reality of Armenia because uh, except from this uh, pandemic that we all have, uh, Armenia also went through, uh, through the war uh, of Nagorno-Karabakh of 2020 uh, and our young people actually faced many challenges uh, than the rest of the uh, of the countries uh, here. Uh, I would uh, point out this uh, mental health and mental uh, support that they need, and they are getting basically this from the youth organizations and uh, youth clubs. Uh, because uh, this was a big, uh, I don't want to generalize a lot because uh, this is not my work basically, but uh, for my, uh, as, as, as my uh, way of thinking, it was a huge stress and a huge uh, 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 thing for young people who were not ready. Uh, yeah, we are a generation that already saw many wars, but, the, uh, wars, but this one was... Uh, not the one that we were expecting or were ready for. Uh, so uh, all of these mental uh, uh, problems, uh, we are just uh, trying to adjust and to uh, meet the needs of young people that, uh, that actually suffered a lot. Uh, this is actually a hard uh, problem for me also because we are all emotional on this. Uh, the youth workers themselves, First, they need the help uh, in order to also uh, give help to the uh, rest of the young people. Uh, then uh, uh, the challenges are staying still this uh, main uh, uh, 
uh, youth policy problems and the lack of state-supported youth strategies. Uh, unfortunately, in Armenia, uh, it's already more than three, three years that uh, we don't have uh, a proper youth policy, which is in action and which uh, also has all of its uh, action, uh, action plans. We are doing things on uh, uh, inertially, but uh, still we don't have updated youth policy. Um, of course, a big group worked on that, but uh, it's still ongoing. So right now, at the moment that I'm talking and I'm giving this interview, uh, we don't have the adopted youth strategy in Armenia uh, on, on the national level, which is uh, bringing many, many challenges and uh, uh, hardships for the youth sector. Uh, and uh, for me, the main problem is that we have uh, brilliant youth workers who get their experience basically from the international youth work sector, from, from the international community of youth workers. Uh, however, here in Armenia we lack a lot uh, youth work education, uh, so education for youth workers who can get competencies and their uh, abilities can be improved and we can actually develop and bring uh, new and new opportunities for young people. Uh, then another uh, thing that I want to point out uh, is the mobility opportunities. Um, Armenia has uh, uh, closed borders, uh, almost 80% uh, is closed uh, and we actually um, uh, appreciate a lot these mobility chances that we get with the Europe, with the European uh, uh, youth work sector. However, with the pandemic, all of this lockdown, uh, these chances became just zero. Uh, now we are starting again and we felt on our skill, uh, skins that how important it is to be connected, to be, uh, to be able to travel, just to be mobile. And this right of mobility is very, very important. And uh, I think we, nobody can deny this. Uh, Young people need also uh, career orientation opportunities. They are mentioning this a lot, uh, that still in the labor market, they cannot fulfill themselves. They are uh, choosing professions that, I, that are not needed anymore in the, in the labor market, or uh, they cannot uh, fulfill their uh, aspirations afterwards, after getting this profession. So uh, from the youth work sector, they really need these uh, orientation opportunities. And uh, I would say last but not least uh, is, the, is still the youth information. Uh, yes, we are living in the age of information, technologies, I ICT, but unfortunately, uh, many young people are still mentioning uh, that yes, this is our need, we are lacking information, uh, uh, youth-friendly information specifically, the information that can be accessible, that can reach out to us easily, we can, know, like, we can know how to use this information and we can know that yes, this information is about us. us. Uh, and youth organizations are trying to handle all of these issues uh, and to create opportunities. But um, unfortunately, with the state uh, support, with the lack of state support on the youth work field, uh, Armenian youth work uh, is doing its steps very slowly. Talking about the main problems and achievements of youth clubs, I want to start from Armenia and then go to European level. Um, I, I still uh, think that the youth spaces are the main problems uh, for youth clubs in Armenia because uh, uh, we don't have physical spaces, first of all. Uh, on municipal level, uh, we have, I, I think, just one youth, youth center, which is uh, supported by the, uh, by the community funding, which is not sufficient uh, for the Armenian reality. Uh, then uh, the youth spaces that we still have are provided by the youth organizations themselves. So they are fi finding uh, the funding, uh, they are managing themselves and they are providing these spaces to young people, but it's not uh, community uh, level spaces. 
uh, uh, so for example if someone from the rural area in Armenia wants to self-organize they have uh, maybe already they have their youth club and they want to meet where they are going to meet like in someone's uh, apartment or flat it's not uh, convenient of course they need uh, safe spaces that all the families uh, will allow actually their children to go and be in the youth spaces. Uh, then on the European level, uh, of course, this pandemic brought uh, uh, hard situation and challenges because uh, young people cannot see each other. It was a lockdown and uh, as, a, as a board member of ESIC, we also had these uh, uh, meetings with our member organizations and trying to find out uh, how youth work can still uh, be as sufficient and uh, as uh, as uh, be as uh, sufficient as it used to be. Uh, of course, the funding was the main challenge, but on the other hand, I would say uh, youth work was so innovative that uh, they easily transferred into uh, online youth work. Uh, our member organizations of uh, ECYC, uh, they already had, but I'm super happy that during this pandemic, they also developed the, their uh, online youth clubs a lot. So they enhanced. Uh, and I would say many young people were attending this with uh, much uh, fun and they were very happy for this. Uh, and uh, we have this huge step <laughs> after this lockdown because digital youth work was not about only online youth work, uh, it was also about offline youth work, but right now we did a huge step in the online digital youth work. From my perspective, innovation uh, can be perceived really differently <laughs> from different people. Uh, I, will, I would give my own perception maybe here also, uh, that for me innovation means also doing all things in a new way. Uh, so I, I can give a bit ex uh, example to make this clear. For instance, uh, using the methodology of telling stories uh, was not a new thing, uh, but uh, while we decided uh, to prepare a collection of short stories uh, about uh, like uh, uh, challenges that youth organizations faced, uh, we decided to create this collection of youth, uh, of uh, short stories about shrinking space for civil society in order to create identity among youth, uh, youth and young people through telling stories and actually to consolidate civil society. Uh, and I think this can be uh, at least considered as a glimpse, as an attempt of, uh, of innovation in youth work on the European level. Uh, so another example maybe is uh, the starting uh, using practices and ways of approaches that are already used in other fields uh, because uh, you one cannot deny that youth work is also a bit interdisciplinary. Um, but for example, uh, uh, we... I can bring an example of plugging. Uh, it is a combination of uh, jogging with uh, picking up litter. So it started uh, to be used in Sweden around uh, 2016 uh, and spread to other countries also, uh, but following increased concern uh, about plastic pollution. And recently I saw that many organizations, youth organizations, uh, decided to use this uh, for mobilizing youth and developing and creating uh, large-scale youth events, which is actually very innovative and it has this innovative element of bringing environmental uh, method or approach into youth work. And those examples, I would say, are not so uh, few. If one wants to see innovation, 
you still can find it even though it could it couldn't be for example a, a new bicycle or a new invention but uh, still it can be uh, quite sparkling and for young people it can be really innovative so for me uh, innovation should be seen in a in a local context in a context of uh, that country or region or local community but also in the field and environment that it is developed and it is being used uh, while, while looking to the history of humankind, uh, we can see that innovation and being creative was uh, there during all of the time, mostly. And uh, I think the same is uh, for, for the youth work sector and for, uh, I would say, mainly for the social sector, um, especially in the non-governmental and non-profit organizations. So uh, I think that, no, unfortunately, many uh, organizations do not really understand that what they are doing is really innovative and it can be also delivered in that way that uh, this can be considered as an innovation. Um, however, I think that the, the practices itself are quite innovative and uh, they really need some more uh, awareness raising about their practices. Uh, here, I think that, uh, yes, youth workers and maybe the practitioners of the field have to start talking about this more often uh, and to bring recognition actually to this field. Uh, and for this, I, I guess, exist uh, we <laughs> and we can also help uh, to say that after the pandemic, what we did and what we are right now doing uh, is uh, the attempt of uh, being innovative and finding new solutions. Uh, I, I will bring one example. Uh, so before the pandemic, we were using some uh, telecommunication methods and uh, all of these Zoom calls, online meetings, etc. But it wasn't wide, widely used, but still it was there. And nobody was thinking that uh, using hybrid model of meetings uh, can be quite effective. But right now we are doing this, like almost all of us are doing this. For us right now, it's, it's not so much innovative because we are all in, in this together. Uh, but think about this uh, after several years or maybe, I don't know, 10 years after this, we will uh, have a look uh, and say, yes, this was uh, quite an innovative uh, step while uh, achieving to our aspirations and our goals. So we were flexible, we used different methods, we tried to find creative sol solutions to bring uh, and to adjust uh, all of this communication and tools to our needs. I think that especially in this post-pandemic Europe, uh, youth work must seek to innovate and to go further than uh, the paths already known. Uh, of course, we are all in this together in the same shoes, uh, uh, but uh, European uh, uh, Academy on Youth Work is actually uh, dealing with these current trends uh, and uh, bringing uh, together the practitioners who are thinking about uh, innovation and uh, who are striving towards this maintenance of the good structures and practices that already exist. I think this is uh, much important because uh, on the European level we have this uh, third European Youth Work Convention and the European Youth Work Agenda uh, which says that uh, the, the uh, new practices and structures have to be always uh, be uh, under our attention. Uh, so for me, European Academy on Youth Work uh, uh, clearly um, points out this need which is very important and which we are already doing. We, uh, we started doing this even before the, the, the convention, the third European Youth Work Convention. And uh, I'm very happy that, uh, yes, we still uh, have uh, things to do in this field because as I mentioned, the recognition 
and awareness raising on innovative approaches, methods, whether they are completely new or something uh, really old, but is used, uh, but uh, but are used in a new way. Uh, we have to point out and uh, put our attention on that. For me, innovation is very much related with the learning uh, because uh, we are all learning, uh, both the youth workers, young people, practitioners, policy makers or researchers. Uh, so uh, learning and innovation go hand in hand. And I think that uh, nobody should be arrogant to say that uh, what you did yesterday will be sufficient for tomorrow. Uh, we have to be uh, really <laughs> uh, critical about uh, the ways and approaches that we already had and to try to uh, enhance them all the time. Uh, even though some are very successful, some are really useful and we are doing that, it's, uh, it's bringing uh, a huge uh, benefit to our communities and our society. Uh, but uh, I know that uh, youth work and uh, youth organizations, youth workers have this huge potential because we are all in this learning uh, space uh, together. Mm -hmm.